That looks like a Triumph Spitfire, doesn't it? With the hood up? Well, it is. It's a 79 Triumph Spitfire. But one important change has been made to it. It's been converted to an electric vehicle. It was done in 1993 by Rick Michaels. It has regenerative braking, so when he hits the brakes, it helps generate power to recharge the batteries. Unlike most electric vehicles, however, this still has the four-speed transmission, which still shifts just like a four-speed Triumph, and it still has the same rear differential. It also still has the gas pedal that's connected to the electric motor. Very cool. There's the cord so you can plug it in and charge the batteries up. Real nice vehicle. Nice of him to uh, have it here in the uh, museum so he can share it with us. Now this crazy looking thing, holy moly, that's weird. Look at the body on this thing and the size of those wheels, woo! It's a 1936 Harris aerodynamic steam car. This thing was powered by steam. Unbelievable and amazing. Wow. It's not a small vehicle. Like I said, I'm about six feet tall. Here we are. What a monster machine, holy moly. I would imagine this is a one-off. There's probably no other one like this in existence. This is just bizarre. Each of these cars, these five cars here, is that these cars participated in the 24 Hours of Le Mans road race. Yep. And they survived. That's the amazing thing. <laughs> Beautiful. We have some three wheelers here. How do you get in it? There's no door. Aha, yes there is. 56 Henkel Cabine 175, German. How do you get in? You open the door handle right there and pull the whole front toward you. I do that, but they frown on people touching their cars, understandably. And as I suspected, the steering wheel and the instrument cluster, they move as you open the door to give you room to get in. With all that window area, they've got some pretty good visibility, wouldn't you say? Now this here is a 1958 BMW, Isetta. I actually seen one of these out in public. It was on the back of a flatbed truck being transported somewhere. And again, you open the front of it if you want to get in. Just like the German model. Pretty cool. This is a 1950 French micro car. Nice little fender skirts there. Ah, it's got steel spoke wheels. 
steering wheel right smack dab in the center of it. I guess that's so you can share the driving with your passenger. Such big headlights. Now this is a 1957 Messerschmitt KR200 from Germany. Again, another three-wheeler. Just enough room for one person, of course. Actually, if you wanted to scrunch somebody in the back, you could. Interesting steering wheel. The sign says the Messerschmitt actually travels faster in reverse than it does going forward. That's if you've got the balls to try it. This is a 1956 Auto National Biscuiter 100 from France. Actually, that kind of looks like it was a high school shop project, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a little four-wheeler. This is a 1996 Tatra T700 from Czechoslovakia. Pretty decent looking car, wouldn't you think? Plenty of room for four or five people. This is another Tatra. This is a 1978 T613. Not a bad looking little car. Let's go a little further back to a 1964 Tatra T603 MK2 Saloon. Split window. Kind of nice it has those windows that open up in the back right here. Get good little ventilation, airflow. Another Tatra. This is the Tatra Plan from 1950, a T600. Oh look, the clock still works. Oh, I'm just kidding. Interesting car design. It's a rear engine. I believe, is it not? Why, yes, it certainly does look like it. Going a little further back, we've got a 1938 Tatra T57. Especially like those grab handles for the rear seat passengers just in case you drive off the road. Bloody knuckles. Or I should say white knuckles. Ah! 
I love the size of that mirror. That's huge. Wow. I don't even have a mirror that small on my entire car. Going back a little further, we've got another Tatra. It's a 1932 T-54. Right-hand drive. Interesting. 